Debt reduction is key to having top-notch personal finances. Ideally, you want to be completely bad debt free. What does that even mean? How will the debt snowball method, or the debt avalanche method for that matter, lead you to a debt free future? Is there another way if neither of those methodologies are quite right for you? We're going to talk about all those things in this video. So be sure to lovingly, gently, tenderly caress that like button for the YouTube algorithm and we'll get started. But before we do, I should introduce myself for those of you that don't already know. I'm Derek West, the host of Finance Squared, where we love to talk about personal finance and how to improve all aspects of it. And debt reduction is one of the key ways to having healthy finances. Now, for those of you that may not already know, let's get into a discussion on why holding too much debt is a bad thing. Because actually, in some circles, it isn't a bad thing necessarily. Debt, if you can afford to pay it off, can actually help to advance your personal wealth. Most newly formed companies and startups have some form of debt associated to them before they really make it big. As a matter of fact, most real estate developers and folks who buy houses and apartments to rent them out have enormous debts to their names. Think of guys like Grant Cardone, Stephen Graham, other famous YouTubers that love to discuss real estate on their channels. But the difference between their debt and most debt of Americans is that their debt is being used as a tool to increase their wealth. You see, if you go into debt to build an apartment complex, on the other side of that debt, you're hoping that someone will buy it from you, or at the very least you'll be able to make a profit or more than likely break even, on the rent that you make while you're looking for a buyer who will take it off your hands and try and get the apartment to cash flow. Same thing when you take out debt to purchase a house, to rent out to people. The idea is that you find a house that meets all the criteria to cash flow positively, or be as close as possible to breaking even when you get it, while you fix it, get rents from the tenants, and while the house appreciates in value, which most homes tend to do. Not all, but most. And then there's consumer debt. Things like high interest credit cards, that is to say, cards that have a large balance on them that were not paid off in full the month that they were made, the month that those purchases were made. Please take a look at the video card on the screen right now to get an idea of how to use credit cards correctly to improve your personal finances and not get into bad debt situations. And then of course we have car loans. Why lease a car or buy a used car with cash when you can take out an enormous loan to get a new car every two years? Well, because it leaves you an enormous consumer debt, of course. And then you have home refinances. Mortgages used for things like home improvements or maybe buying another house to then run out to other others and cash flow. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but using a home equity loan to finance a vacation or plastic surgery or a car purchase can lead you to a place where you're in a constant debt spiral, which sort of takes us to the controversial topic of a home mortgage, which is to say getting a home strictly to own as your own. There's a large movement of people who refuse to buy houses, myself included. Anything other than adding to a real estate portfolio that cash flows as well as appreciates. I really don't see the point of getting a home loan for a house that I don't really need all that space of. To pay an enormous amount of interest over a 30 year period, doubling my payment essentially. A time period where I could be applying those same payments to investments and building my businesses. This one is also sort of controversial, but college debt. This one oftentimes falls into the good debt category. In other words, if you get the degree, it will enable you to make more money than you otherwise would be able to, which is both right and wrong at the same time. I think it's becoming more and more accepted in today's day and age that folks can get an online education using things like Udemy, Skillshare, and other platforms to get the education that they need to get into the career that they want. And sites like Fiverr or Upwork to help them get started working on projects that will allow them to put something on their resume so that they can then use that to either get their own firm or get hired onto a pretty impressive company. Meaning that college is no longer the gateway to success. However, it can be argued that a good college degree can open the door for you to get a good job. And that is something that I'm not necessarily gonna argue with. Having gotten a couple of good college degrees myself, that opened up several doors for me. So it is true that your earning power will be much better if you get a college degree in a subject that is in high demand and you get a job in that field. For all other instances, however, it's pretty much considered bad debt. But are you damned to have this debt hanging over you like the sword of Damocles for the rest of your life? What do you do? Well, now, reduce your debt. Easy for me to say, right? The question is, how? There are many different ways to do this and there are many different people that will tell you different strategies, including going cold turkey. Going cold turkey, trying to do your best to just tap your debt little by little with no plan really and just a hope that all those efforts for tackling your debt will just keep adding up. That is the first methodology that many people try. And frankly, it's not the worst strategy out there. If you do that, you're taking imperfect action and imperfect action is better than no action whatsoever. Now that said, without a plan, it's hard to stay consistent. And without measuring your progress, it's hard to know how to adjust your tactics to be truly as effective as possible with the knowledge that you have. 
So plan to reduce your debt. What should the plan be? First things first, track your finances. How you say, with any app out there, there's millions of them. Well, millions is kind of an exaggeration, probably thousands, but there's several apps out there for you to try. One of the more popular ones is personal finance. They seem to be the most complete app on the market for the purposes of tracking your spending. I did mention that there are others out there and this isn't an endorsement for that particular brand. And I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, just so you know. So just feel free to pick and choose one of the best that you feel is the best, but personal finance just seems like they have the best overall all around experience. But in any case, just track your spending and your income so you know exactly where all your money goes and where it comes from. The truth is you're probably not gonna like the answer when you first take a look. I know I didn't. There was spending going on that I was completely unaware of and I considered myself a reasonably frugal individual, but there were those expenses right in front of my eyes. Expenses that I incurred from years ago that I just didn't remember that I picked up. But that is the beautiful part. Once you know, you can take action. Taking action on cutting out the stuff that you don't need or want in your life. As an example, I had Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, HBO Max, all of those things. Did I really watch all that stuff? No. I'm a very busy individual with a full-time job, running a YouTube channel, running multiple online stores. Where do I have the time to watch any of that stuff? I just cut it all out. You can do something similar yourself. Ask yourself, do you really need all of that? And do you even want all of that? Didn't you just cut the cord? How is it that you're now spending more on entertainment than you were before? But this time, instead of just one bill, you're paying like eight. So take the ones that you watch the least and just cancel them. I canceled my Netflix, Hulu. I only have Amazon Prime only because I get great deals on shipping. The others do not give me great deals on shipping. Therefore, they got the boot. That was a little bit of a tangent, but the point is, do you have duplicate services that you're unaware of? Do you have services that you do not use anymore? Are you paying for something and don't even know it? Well, because you're tracking your spending, now you know. Part two in the plan, pick a debt reduction plan. There are two popular schools of thought on debt reduction. In fact, it's the title of the video, Debt Avalanche and Debt Snowball. And no, I have no idea why they are named after winter themed projectiles. Maybe because people that like to reduce their debt love to ski, who knows? But the debt snowball, each of them have their pluses and minuses. And the debt snowball method has come under some scrutiny. Why you may ask? Well, take a listen to what it is to get an idea. The debt snowball method is about paying off the smallest debt first to get that out of the way before taking the savings from paying it off and then applying that to your other larger debts. Meaning you would pay the minimum on all your debts and then take any money left over and apply those to the smallest debt first. Taking those next savings and applying it to the next smallest debt next and keep going on and on like that until you eventually knock out all of your debts. At which point you have more savings because you're no longer paying that debt you then apply that saved money to the next debt, knocking it out as well, and so on until they're all gone. That way you're building momentum with each and every debt that you knock out. Thus the term debt snowball. So I guess I do know why they call it the debt snowball. And one of the reasons why it works for some people is that most people don't like throwing large sums of money at a problem when they aren't seeing any progress, which is what occurs when you have a high interest payment somewhere. You make a large lump sum payment, that payment mostly goes to interest and not to reducing the principal, and thus you become frustrated, at which point you just stick to paying the minimum amount. And here's one of the keys to debt reduction that isn't really mentioned enough. Getting out of debt is mostly psychological, similar to giving the willpower to go to the gym and giving it 110% to your exercise. It's something that if you try and go big and bold when you first start out, you're likely gonna hurt yourself or at the very least become sore, discouraging you from being consistent, which is the key to building a healthy body and a healthy financial life. Which means that maybe you need to start off using a system that might not be as efficient, but in the end, will get you to being more consistent. And that's one of the criticisms of the debt snowball method, by the way, that you end up spending more money getting out of debt than you would with either a debt consolidation loan or with the debt avalanche method. Mainly because you're paying off the smallest debt first, regardless of the interest rates. When you have larger debts, possibly with larger interest rates, just accumulating as you're paying off the minimum payments. The debt avalanche method is slightly different, but it addresses this. You know, it's different, but it's similar at the same time. You still make the minimum payments on all your debts, but this time you're focusing on taking any extra money you have lying around and applying it to the debt with the largest interest payment. Once you pay that largest interest debt off, you then take the savings from that. You put that payment towards the next highest interest rate and so on until you pay off all of your debt. The best thing about the debt avalanche method is that you will save the most money in interest using the, that methodology. So we discussed one of the problems with this methodology earlier on in that it is not necessarily um, psychologically satisfying as the debt snowball method. Is there another way? Certainly. Nobody says you have to just pick and choose one of the two methodologies and stay with them for life. 
it's actually possible to use both of them. Keep in mind, in both scenarios, you're paying the minimum amount on all of your debts. So that's where you start off. Then once you're paying the minimums on all of your debts, start off with the debt snowball. Use the debt snowball to pay off the smallest debt first, applying any extra money you have to start and keep that momentum going. You keep doing that, building up the muscle of debt repayment the whole time. Then once you're good at repaying debt, switch to applying extra money you keep from all the small wins you've made to the debt with the highest interest rate. Now the reason why this will work is because you're building the discipline, just like when you're building up your muscularity or when you're building up your endurance for running. You're building up a discipline that's needed to execute a debt repayment strategy. And once you have that discipline, you can then tackle the strategy that is proven to save more money over time, all while taking another loan to pay off your debts. And once you've built the discipline to put together the money you'll need to pay off debt, you can apply the money that you were using to pay off those debts to your savings and to your investments, truly taking your financial future into the stratosphere. You're gonna wanna take a look at some of the videos in the video card above. In it, I go over other smart money strategies and debt reduction strategies that you definitely are not gonna wanna miss. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications as we have more videos on this topic and others coming out in the very near future, including videos on cryptocurrencies, investing strategies, and so much more. Keep in mind, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your personal debts using one of the debt methodologies above or a combination of them all. And I'll talk to you next time. Peace.